Hi, hello, welcome to Devon Monk's Works and Worlds. This might be Devon Monk's Works and Worlds 11. <laughs> I really should keep track of this. Might be Devon Monk's Works and World 12, but it's is Devon Monk's Works and World up there past five, which I'm very excited about. Um, if you haven't been tuning in to Monday Monks, might I suggest you look at the last two Monday Monks that I posted. I interviewed my brother who is a paranormal investigator. He also investigates cryptid, UFO, uh, high strangeness, and that kind of stuff. He does this in real life. I write about this stuff in my books, but he does this stuff with my other brother, Darren. So my brothers, Daryl and Darren, are both uh, investigators into these kinds of things. And next week, so Sunday, April 24th at one o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time or one o'clock, you know, LA time or Portland time or Seattle time. Um, my brothers are going to be talking about several different subjects live so you can ask them questions. And if you go over to their page on YouTube, on their YouTube channel, it's called Under the Oregon Moon, Under the Oregon Moon. You can set a reminder or you can just tune in next Sunday at one o'clock and they'll be taking your questions and they have listed the subjects that they're going to be covering down below their uh, you know, upcoming live feed little announcement. So go to their YouTube channel under the Oregon Moon, check out what they're gonna be talking about. If that sounds interesting to you, then tune in. I will certainly be tuned in to ask some questions and to talk to them. And uh, again, if you didn't see the interview with my brother, Daryl, I have two interviews up. Uh, one was talking about Under the Oregon Moon and how we got into this kind of stuff. The second one was talking about some of our experiences that I've had and that he's had that are just not, I mean, they're not clearly explainable. So they were interesting to talk about. Although I gotta say, at the end of that second interview, <laughs> we had a little dog in the house, and every time my brother would talk, he would just start barking. So at the end of the interview, I think I went a little like, oh no, <laughs> this is live, you know, live taping and, well, taping, video, <laughs> videoing, and um, all of a sudden there's a dog in it, but it's kind of funny. But I thought they're uh, fun little 15 minute, 17 minute uh, interviews. Check them out if you want to. Okay. Hello, hi, welcome to Monday Month. What's going on with writing? I am still writing Brute of All Evil. I will be writing that to the end of time. <laughs> Actually, I'm making good progress. I'm uh, definitely just hit one of the dun 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 moments where everything is gonna go really fast from here. So I'm hope, I mean, the story's gonna go really fast. I'm hoping the writing of it will go really fast because sometimes, even when you're in the most exciting part of the story as a writer, sometimes you're still just kind of slogging through sentence by sentence. But I've been making steady progress. And my goal is to get this done and hand it into my copy editor by the end of April. And I don't know if I'm gonna hit that. And if I don't hit that, then I've pretty much blown that um, deadline and the space where my copy editor has to actually do the work. So then I don't know what I'm going to do because I know she's leaving town and won't be available for a couple months. And so I will have to either find another copy editor on the, you know, on the fly, on the real quick to get it uh, looked over so that I can get this book out to you. It's book nine and I'm excited to get it out to you. Um, I'm excited where it's going. It's just taken a little while to get it there. So hopefully it'll turn out how I'm, um, how I imagine it'll turn out. Books don't always do that. This one might not do that, but I'm I'm hoping for it. Okay, so uh, writing is going well. Thank you. Uh, knitting is also going well. I'm going to make a ridiculous hat next. I know I owe a toy for the next newsletter in May, but I just, I need, <laughs> I need to make this hat. So I just picked out the yarn for it. I just need to grab the needle and start on it. I think I can knit it up in a day or two. And it's for me. It's a dumb hat that I need to wear. So I will show you that dumb hat maybe even next week because I, I think I'll have it done. So uh, stay tuned for dumb hat. It's coming your way. Uh, speaking of dumb fashion choices, <laughs> I went to the store the other day and I'm like, <laughs> everything was 60s. Everything was 60s and 70s. And I thought, oh, ee, blah, that's bad. But then I was like, look at those pants. Maybe I need to get those pants, those wide leg pants that I have nothing, nothing in my wardrobe to go with. They were on sale. I mean, I can't say that. And I'm like, should I buy them? And my son was with me and he's like, do you like them? Will you wear them? And I'm like, well, I don't know if that's a yes to both of those questions, but I kind of want them. <laughs> I'm going to show you these pants. Hang on, I brought them up here. 
<laughs> I haven't even worn them yet because I don't know what kind of shirt to wear with them. I'll figure it out. But <laughs> are you ready for my decisions were made, people? Decisions were made. Are you ready to see the pants that I bought? <laughs> ready? Here, here they are. <laughs> Look at these. Okay, okay, hold on. Look at these amazing britches. Do you see these things? Look at that. They're denim. <laughs> and they are just so, so crazy. I love them. They're dumb. And um, I have nothing that matches them. They're very bright green. My camera isn't really picking that up. But they are, they are um, like, you know that chewing gum that was like, what kind was it? But it was bright green. It was like not double mint. Double mint isn't isn't uh green but there's one that's bright chewing gum green these are that color in real life <laughs> so oops sorry <laughs> the microphone so yes i have bought some weirdo pants that i have to find some sort of weirdo shirt to wear with them more on that later but uh you know if i get the whole outfit together i'll have the hat too and then i will be styling <laughs> um what else is going on in Devon Monk world? We have planted, I have planted some flowers in the flower beds this year. I was waiting until after the last frost. So I thought beginning of April should be fine because we don't usually only get rain in April and it really rarely gets below uh, freezing. And then April decided to be just wild and wooly and we got rain of course and hail and frost and ice and snow we got snow in april and i don't think i have ever seen that i've seen snow in march but never snow in april snow we got wind storms we got beautiful warm sunny days and uh we got thunderstorms real close to us but not at us and there's even a funnel cloud like almost a tornado not too far away and that was all within a week that was a week of april april has outdone herself she has tried on all the outfits and decided which one she wants to wear. And apparently the answer was all of them. So April has been weather busy. And uh, luckily we haven't had any branches come down. Some people lost some trees and branches in the windstorms and the ice and snow and all that stuff. Um, but we, I did put flowers in the ground and then it snowed and iced and <laughs> sorry, flowers <laughs> hang in there. <laughs> But mostly it was bulbs, so tulips and uh, irises, flake irises. I wanted some of those. And I did plant some daisies and uh, black-eyed Susans and forget-me-nots. And I want to plant a few more of those. Uh, the thing is that they, especially the daisies and the black-eyed Susans, need um, sun, a lot of sun. And my yard has beds, and most of the beds have trees or higher bushes, shady bushes over them. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to plant an entire garden, raised garden bed of just daisies and black-eyed Susans. And I probably will. <laughs> I'm probably going to give up food for some flowers. I love them. I do have one back bed that they might uh, go nicely there. But I'm trying to kind of create spaces for the flowers that thrive to just go wild where they are and trying to kind of fight weeds with flowers. So I don't mind dandelions. I know that they're one of the first things that bees um, get nectar out of in the spring. So I'm fine with dandelions and some of those kinds of weeds, but there are some, there are some creeping weeds like ivy and black, well, blackberries are a weed here, blackberries and um, those sticky things. I don't know what they're called, but they, they run on runners and they climb and they're sticky. And anyway, so there's some things that are, and, and thistles. <laughs> we had a thistle. You may have seen this if you've been following me for a while, but we had a thistle about three years ago that was probably seven feet tall. <laughs> I have a picture of me standing next to it when it was a baby thistle and it's as tall as me and I'm like five, 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 six. So um, yeah, we get large, large weeds and I want to just put like daisies and black eyed Susans and other, you know, other flowers that'll bloom and do well, which we're slowly doing that with the yard. So yard work has gone well. Um, what else is going on? Conventions. I have no conventions coming up. I'm seeing a lot of people post that, but I don't have any plans to go to any. Um, I do miss conventions. Like I'm an introvert, so I'm always I'm always a little shy meeting people, and I'm hoping that they're having a good time, and I'm hoping I'm not taking them away from their good time. And and you know, um, but I like getting out in conventions and seeing people who are interested in fantasy and science fiction and horror and all the good genre stuff, romance. 
Um, and uh, I like doing panels. So I like sitting at, uh, and talking with a pile of people and interacting with the audience. Weirdly, I love, I feel pretty comfortable doing that, though I'm, my heart rate's usually up a little high, but um, I enjoy like letting other people answer questions and then adding my little bit to it. So that's fun. Um, but I don't have any conventions planned this year. Uh, I'll let you know if that changes. Are you going to any conventions? Let me know down below which ones you're heading to. Um, are there any virtual conventions anymore? Are they doing that? Because that's kind of fun. You can take me down below. I would like your questions. Please ask me questions if you have something that you want to know about me or about writing or about <laughs> April's weather or my questionable <laughs> choice in clothing. <laughs> that would be fab. <laughs> ask me questions. I will try to answer them. Um, okay. Oh, and also if you want, you can just let me know what you'd like me to do more on the channel. Would you like me to knit while we're talking? I could sit here and knit, put another camera on my hands. I've done that before so you can see me doing my thing or, um, I mean, you probably don't want to watch me write on screen. <laughs> Watch me weeping into my keyboard. <laughs> okay, so since I have just a couple more minutes left, I will draw a little uh, question out of our heart box here, our little wooden heart box where we ha where I have written um, different subjects that I can answer, usually about my books and stuff, but sometimes other things. Let me just take a random one out here and see what we get. Oh. <laughs> I've written a lot of books and there are times when I know there's a character that I should know and then I don't remember that character and this is one of those times so I'm going to put it back in here. I know that's kind of, maybe I'll cut that out of the vid so you don't know that I'm cheating on that one. I have to think about that. Who the heck is that? What is he in? Shoot, I know it's a guy that I've written. Okay, we'll do this. This is something I do remember. <laughs> I remember the other one too, I just can't quite remember. Oh, I got it. He's from the Ordinary Magic series. I can't even believe I couldn't remember that. I just totally blanked out. Okay, it was Hogan, just so that you're not in total um, suspense, which is Jean's boyfriend. He's half to Jen, and he is a baker in Ordinary Magic series, and he's fabulous. But uh, I put him back in the box, so we'll talk about him later. But completely left my mind there for a minute. Okay, so we pulled instead House Immortal. House Immortal. That is a series of books that I wrote. They, it's three books, it's a trilogy. They are my idea of kind of a urban fantasy science fiction blend. We are working with uh, the main character and many of the side characters are the galvanized, which are basically immortal creatures who are pieced together, kind of like Frankenstein style. And there's, uh, they've been used as as super soldiers and as slaves and as servants and as whatever people want to use them for because they're not quite people uh, but they're very powerful and almost nigh invulnerable almost non-killable and it's a story of uh, Matilda and uh, her trying to basically save her people but also save the world of course there's a very high stakes in this it's a little dark there's some violence there is some gore People die. Um, I like happy endings just as a reader. So if you're wondering how things will usually turn out in my books, I'm not going to say always, but I lean toward the positive. Just, you know, we might have some dark stuff, but we're going to get somewhere, people. Um, it's a three book series, like I said, and it invo involves science fiction in a way that also involves time travel, which isn't everybody's favorite kind of story. Um, but it's a tight little turn in the rules of the of the universe that I've made. And um, I think it works. I've had a couple of readers tell me that it's it it corkscrews really nicely, that the story rolls really well. Um, and one of the things that I did in these books that I've never done in any other books is I have a single line at the top of each chapter. And that line is a a diary entry from someone. And all of those lines add up to, if you read just those top lines, they create their own kind of narrative. And if you read each of the top lines in each of the three books, that creates a different narrative. And if you just read them as you hit each chapter, they create a narrative. It's kind of a story inside of a story that I created inside the time travel story <laughs> of the science fiction or fantasy thing. 
I did that. So those are the House Immortal books. There are three. The first one is called Cleverly. House Immortal. <laughs> that was my editor's idea. Uh, I had suggested, I think I suggested that title, House Immortal, because the Galvanized Immortal and the world is separated into houses. And um, so we were trying to come up with a series name and my editor's like, how about House Immortal series? I'm like, I like it. Let's do it. So House Immortal is the first one. The second one is, um, oh, geez. <laughs> Crucible Zero, I'm pretty sure is the second one. And the third one is Infinity Bell. Or the second one might be Infinity Bell and the last one might be Crucible Zero. I think that's actually the right order. I'm not sure. I'll try to put a link down below to them if you want to look at them. Of course, you can find all of my books on devonmonk.com or most retailers out there. Um, yeah, so that's the House Mortal series. I have hit my 15 minutes, which is about how long I figure any of you want to listen to me ramble on. So I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, for the day. Thank you for coming by. Please check out my brother's channel, Under the Oregon Moon, next Sunday, April 24th, 1 o'clock. They're going to be live. They're going to be answering questions. They're going to be talking about high strangeness, some UFO stuff, some interesting things. Please check in. Uh, on their channel. I'll be there checking in on their channel. And um, otherwise, uh, happy reading to you. I hope your weather is calmer than our weather has been and that you're having a lovely spring so far. So far, I will see you next week or whenever you find the next video. Bye for now.